Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Dale Click from the Progressive Chevrolet Stark County Fair, uh, opening up in about five days, August 29th. Through how far does it go? How long does it, it goes go? Goes through Labor Day. Labor Day is our last day. Awesome. All right. Um, we need to get on our calendars all of the fun activities. You did mention uh, one of the concerts that's coming up, but let's go through everything that uh, we will be able to find when we when we go. Great. The evening entertainment. So, so one of the exciting things that that the board did several years ago, maybe 10, 20 years ago, I'm not sure, is the Stark County Band Show. So every uh, every county or every school in the county that that wants to participate is going to have their band there doing their halftime routine um, and they march through and it's it's basically two shows on the first night the second night uh we're proud like i said with our with our partnership with country fest um to bring charlie daniels national recording star country music hall of famer uh and the guy just is electric in in a concert i've seen him several times he's awesome so we have an opening act for him too is keith anderson and charlie daniels will be there on the second night of the fair the 30th again those tickets are online cool. you, you can buy those so you don't have to wait in line uh, still some seats left. I was going to say, yeah. has that not sold out? That's uh, amazing. We, we have sold more tickets this year than we ever have yes. pre-sale in the, in the past. Um, so then uh, we have Broken Horn Rodeo. Um, oh. If you've never been to a rodeo, it's a blast. I'm not a rodeo guy, but one of the cool things about the the rodeo company that we have coming in is they're nationally sanctioned. So you're going to have guys that are there riding to accrue points for big events throughout the rest of the year wow. and, and hopefully accruing points for them to earn the belt buckle, you know, a golden belt buckle in Las Vegas. So you're going to get some premium cowboys there doing cowboy stuff anywhere, <laughs> you know, uh, roping, bull riding, bronc riding, uh, you name it, barrel racing, everything. So it is a lot of fun. And if you have kids, they have a clown. One of the things I was amazed at last year as I watched it with my nephew, they have a clown. And while they're setting things up, it is just even not even just watching the rodeo. The guy does a great job of emceeing the night and having a great time with the kids. Mm-hmm. They, they do a lot of stuff to keep the kids involved while they're moving from one, one event to another. It's just a great show for, oh for your family. All that without having to travel to Texas. <laughs> yeah, you don't even have to go to it's Texas. It's right all here in our backyard. Um, then we have, uh, so Friday and Saturday night, you have the OSTPA uh, and the NATPA tractor and truck poles. Oh. <laughs> um, and that is a huge draw when yes. you see those big, loud <laughs> tractors and big, loud trucks. You know, uh, th- that draws people in for us every year it's it's a great draw for us and like i said danny schmucker does a great job with that uh and just making sure that it's organized he and dave schwartz and charlie schwartz board members they do a great job making sure that that's handled and we are so happy to have those guys as partners the ostpa and the natpa do you still do the demolition derby at I, that all? was my next oh, one. Oh man okay we do the demolition derby on sunday night uh that will be a huge draw i the first time I I saw the demolition derby, I thought, I don't know if what what is it about cars crashing into each other. I don't know that I'll be excite, excited. <laughs> I went, I saw it, and I go, hey, this is pretty cool. And it draws people in. People love the demolition derby. It is a lot of fun to watch. It's all local participants, so it's guys that are taking these cars, fixing them up so that they can drive them in a demolition derby. And man, do they put on a show! It is it is a riot to go watch the demolition derby. So demolition derby pulled you in and. Chocolate covered bacon yeah, pulled that's you in. Guess, they both made a believer yeah, out I guess of you. That's all you need to do at the fair is go get those two things. And then Monday night, or yes. I'm sorry, Monday afternoon, we have another demolition derby oh, on my. Monday. So I mean, wow. we, we have a full slate of, of entertainment. Different cars on Monday than Sunday? Some of them are the same, I think. Some of them are different. So the ones that survive, they're there yeah. on Monday. Then we also have pavilion entertainment with a lot of local. That's more of a local attraction, and it's a place that you can go sit down. We have nice seats in there with armrests on them and there's stuff going on in there all throughout all throughout the fair with local enter- local entertainment we really go out of our way to make sure that we're trying to put the best the best local entertainment in there that we can you said the big word a couple minutes ago family this really is about families isn't it you know i i think so we've talked about the junior fair mm-hmm. when, when you talk about the junior fair these kids are bringing their animals to the fair it's not just the kids. It is it is truly a family commitment to be involved in the fair. You're going to see moms and dads, you know, helping the, their daughter or their son 
with their first year project leading their steer into the show ring. You're going to see moms and dad helping helping them brush their animals, lead their animals, wash their animals, get their animals together. Uh, I mean, we're going to have a lot of people camping at the fair as a family, kind of a vacation. They're going to come camp as a family and just take in the whole the whole sights and sounds. So from that pro- from that aspect of the fair, it is certainly a family oriented thing. And for me, you know, I have three daughters. They're all heavily involved in the 4-H. And it, it's something that we love. They're looking forward to it all year round. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, it was something that I looked forward to. Um, my, my grandfather talks about going to the fair and, and, you know, just riding there in a wagon. So, you know, it, it, some, mm-hmm. for some of these farming families, it, it's deep-rooted. And it's something that is as much a part of their year as the changing of the seasons. And in in some instance, it kind of changes the, the season. You're going from the, the crops are growing to now we're getting ready to start harvesting our crops. Yes. And it's just one of those things that it just kind of gives you those warm, fuzzy feelings, you know, that, that families, it's truly one of those family things that they can interact together. From a, strictly from a, from a consumer standpoint, mm-hmm. it's one of the last things that you can bring your family to, number one, that you can afford, uh, you know, it's cheaper to come to the fair per person than it is gonna, than it's going to be to go see a movie. Mm-hmm. You know, it's six bucks to get into the fair, and you can walk around. You're going to see all of the you're going to see all of the 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 junior fair animals. And to some to some families, that might be the only time they're going to see a cow get milked. Right. You know, we have a milking parlor for kids to. To be able to Try see and go, it out. wow, that's where that's how a cow gets milked, you know, yeah. and, and for people to understand where their where their meat comes from, you know, yes. it, you don't go to the grocery store and buy it, but to be able to go ride the rides, to sit down and watch a show like the rodeo, experience something as a family that you that you normally just don't experience. I think from that standpoint, if you come to the fair with your family, from your from a baby that's going to be in a stroller to mm-hmm. grandma and grandpa, there is going to be something that you're going to walk through and you're going to leave and say, wow, I'm really glad we saw that. Yes. You know, so it really does cover all ages, you know, and, and there's something going to be there that everybody's going to leave there and say, man, I'm glad we went to the fair. That was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. And it's only once a year. Yeah, yeah got to take, advantage, take of it. advantage of it and check it out. You mentioned the rides that we need to address the elephant in the room. We were all heartbroken when we saw the accident at the state fair. What kinds of safety precautions do you put into place to check out the rides? So first and foremost, I would echo your thoughts that, you know, um, it, it, when something like that happens, it, forget about how much money you're going to make at the fair, how many, how many people are going to come to the fair. It, it kind of makes, you know, bake, eating a fresh baked pie, you know, th- our hearts and prayers and thoughts mm-hmm. go out to everyone that was affected in that tragedy at the at, at the state fair. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a tragedy. It was it was a freak accident. Mm-hmm. You know, as you kind of look back through the history, you start thinking. And the reason that was such a big deal is you kind of look back and you say, well, man, there's all these county fairs going on all around the this, this state, all around the country. And you never hear of things like that. Right. So, you know, safety is the number one priority for everybody involved with those rides. Kissel Amusement is who we're using. Um, so to just kind of go through the scenario, those rides are going to be inspected by the people building the rides, the owner of the ride company. Then they're going to be inspected by state inspectors. Um you know, they're, they're constantly inspected, if you want to call it an inspection, but constantly being monitored throughout the day to mm-hmm. make sure that, you know, everything is going to be as safe as it can possibly be. To the point where if you've been to the fair before, you might walk by a ride and say, hey, I saw that ride wasn't operating. It might be because they were fixing something on it that probably wasn't a big deal. Mm-hmm. But it was just, hey, we're not going to sit, we're not going to operate this ride unless it is absolutely as safe as we can possibly make it. There's nothing you can ever do or to stop all kinds of freak accidents, but everybody from the fair board to the state to the county to the ride company, safety is number one. And that's why I think it was that that's why I think it's so important for people to understand it was it was a freak accident. Yes. And the reason it was such a big deal is because it never happens. Because safety is so important for all involved. They always say the safest time to fly 
is right after there's been a, an accident <laughs> right, yeah. because everyone's so now intentional about yeah. checking out. I would think all of the county fairs and state fairs across the country are being extra cautious. Now. Yeah, and, and I'm sure they are. Now we will have we'll have meetings just like we always do with our ride company leading up to the fair to make sure that safety is at the forefront for all of us. Yes. Dale, you obviously love what you do. Why Why do you, as a person, put so much time and effort into something like this? Sometimes I ask myself that question <laughs> and I don't know the answer. Uh, I think it's because I, I, th- I really think it goes back to the family aspect of it. It's something that has been important to my family. And I'm not just talking my immediate family. I have my nieces. I have twin nieces. They they keep their pigs at our house for their for their. Fi- Last night, I had at my house. I had my mom and dad, my brother and si- my sister and brother in law, my other sister and brother in law, and all of our kids. And they were in my backyard leading cows, walking their pigs through the yard, and we just kind of sat down. It was a great family time to wow. just be there. And I think that's something that gets lost, you know, maybe in today's society. So I and but not just my immediate family. It's you know my aunts and uncles, my cousins. Uh, it it goes deeper than that. And and the more you get involved with the fair, you really see the the family connection. There's probably some families out there that may not see each other other than the week of the fair. You know they may see each other, but you know the week of the fair really brings them together. And they're talking about your son's pig and my son's pig, or, or your, you know whatever. So I think for me that's probably the thing is it, it's really a something that I'm passionate about because I think it does bring families together in a unique way. Um, So I would say that's number one. And I really do think it's something, it's one of the largest attractions in Stark County. I mean, you kind of have the Hall of Fame. And then as far as big attractions, we're we're it. You know, (laughs) we are hoping that we're going to have 110,000 people walk through the gates of our fair. And I can't think of any other annual event that's going to have that much participation from the general public. And I couldn't be happier about it. And I, I, I happier about it. And I hope we just can make sure that when people come, they leave there saying, I can't wait till next year. I want to mm-hmm. go back to the fair. Where do you get that number? Is that based on past years? So last year we were just we were just over 80. Uh, don't well, I'm, I'm, I'm not quoting gonna, myself. <laughs> well, no one will know. It's just <laughs> yeah. between you and me. <laughs> uh, we, we were just over that 80,000 mark. Wow. Um, I think the, the record attendance is somewhere around 125. I think with some of the moves that we've made this year, um, I personally have gone, I've done a lot more radio interviews mm-hmm. uh, to, uh, and uh, print interviews with the repository and the independent. I've been and talked to uh, chambers of commerce. I've been and and talked to multiple rotary clubs. Um, Tim Ross, the guy that runs our art hall has, has kind of taken on and started talking at local churches and having people come. How do I enter the fair? How do we, so our participation is starting to go up. So the more people that participate, the more that they're going to tell their people at work and say, Hey, you got to go check out my my pie. You got to go check mm-hmm. out uh, my son's my son's lamb. You know, those mm-hmm. are the things that are going to draw people in. And with with the ease of entry now with our online stuff, with being able to buy tickets online, I'm hoping that that's going to transfer into people saying this is something that's really fun, and it was so easy for us to go do this. Yes, and cost effective, like you said. Yeah, uh, affordable. Yeah, affordable family fun. Go to Stark countyfair.com all everything we've been talking about is up there you can uh, still purchase tickets for most everything yeah i i don't think anything's sold out yet but we're getting close on some of them so go so now. don't dilly dally right okay oh my goodness how much fun dale click thank you for all you do for our community thank you so much